our mandate uh, as Perry Sound Muskoka Community Network is to provide uh, economic development support largely through broadband. We're funded by Fednal, and our mandate is to help not only the supply of broadband by helping getting cell towers, helping getting better broadband, but also on the demand side to encourage people to use technology, to use innovation. And so that's why, by default, we have been the agency that's got involved with that. What is innovation? And we have a number of different definitions that are out there. A lot of people are saying, well, what is innovation? Is it a good idea? We like to think of it more of an idea that can make money. Uh, there's various quotes that are being put out here that uh, essentially uh, this new word innovation is very important because it seems to be the key driver for future growth. In the research we've done, uh, one of the most interesting countries we've come across is Australia. Uh, this is uh, some highlights from their, their report of 2012. So they're at least, this is five years ago, they already are tracking innovation in their communities and we haven't really started. It's not a, when I've looked, I haven't found a lot of regional innovation strategy type studies being done in Canada. And uh, they have all these statistics that they're already tracking why a focus on innovation really helps and it's uh, job growth, it's businesses that incorporate in, uh, innovation grow faster and it's an opportunity for um, innovation to link traditional economic development with the workforce. So uh, where the, the difference between what economic development officers traditionally do and what this is doing is encouraging us to spend more time not just helping existing businesses, but to help people get into business. Working with the high schools, the colleges, et cetera, to bridge that gap uh, is an important additional element. How do you measure this? The two broad scales that you, you can use to measure innovation, one is what's our innovation capacity, which is how many ideas are out there that are worth implementing. And the second one is the acceleration of all the ideas, which ones are we actually implementing? And what we often find is three main categories. The bottom left of the graph is people who start a business for lifestyle. They just want enough to pay the rent because they want to go fishing and hunting and they really don't want to build a big business and growth for them is seen as something scary. They just want enough to pay the bills. The top left is where a lot of the innovation homework has gone traditionally to universities and R&D sites where they create a tremendous number of ideas. The challenge is a lot of those ideas are not getting into the marketplace. And then the third one is these innovative businesses that only have a few ideas, but they're running with them, they're implementing them, they're making money with them. And so we've got these sort of three clusters, and how do we get those different clusters to work together? How do we get the lifestyle companies, persuade them to be more innovative? How do we get that, uh, all those ideas out of universities and colleges into the marketplace? And how do we get those fast-growing businesses to link up with universities and high schools and colleges to get more ideas into their business. Why are we doing this regional innovation strategy? The key, the key assumption we're making here is that most innovation happens bottom up. These days most innovation seldom one person, it's normally a, a few people, but it is working in small communities all over. And what's happening is the help for them is coming top down funding, advice, etc., is often looked at top-down. And so our challenge is to say, how well is this working? Of all the programs that we as stakeholders provide, how well are they meeting the needs of our innovative folks? Do we even know who the innovative folks are in our community? And if we found them and asked them, why are they not moving along? Is it because our programs are unknown to them and we just need to do a better job of telling them? Or do we have programs that don't fit? Or do we need new programs? For most innovators, if you look at the research, these fast-growing companies particularly, they go through what they call this trough of sorrow. There's this tremendous excitement, they've got a new idea, they try it, and then things just get worse and worse and worse. And then you come out with, well, um, should we change the idea or should we just keep going? Should we try to come out the other end? So there's this tremendous frustration. A lot of innovators don't feel they get a lot of love from stakeholders like us because they don't think we understand the problem. So typically what we hear is the sort of comment, uh, they will call us and we will say, well, he's in a, tough, a trough of sorrow, do you want his voicemail, you know? And this feeling that they reach out to us, we really don't understand their problem. And it, this, is a, this is, it seems to be a common challenge for a lot of stakeholders. We've even found this with 
organizations like Y Combinator and Techstars that bring in these, these amazing companies from around the world. And a lot of the frustration is that the startup and early stage companies learn more from each other than they learn from us as outsiders or the teachers or what have you. And so because we don't use the same language or we don't frame the, the issues in the same way, there's this uh, built up frustration that we need to address. The research also shows us from this recent presentation uh, in The Economist magazine, where they're now trying to track innovation and comparing it so you can invest capital or you can invest labor. Traditionally, if you study economics, you looked at labor plus capital and that was your, the drivers of growth. What they're finding now is that a large percentage of the growth is not coming from adding more dollars or adding more people. It's coming from these innovative ideas. And these innovative ideas come up in all sorts of ways. Sometimes it's just a different process. Sometimes it's a different gadget. Sometimes it's a different way of thinking. So in terms of, of trends longer term, what the research is showing us is that um, back in the six, after World War II, there was this tremendous shortage of products. So if you could come up with a factory that could produce something, you could sell it. Then the seven, as it got to the 80s and 90s, there was more and more competition. Your product had to be really good quality. And in those days, if you wanted a factory or whatever to move to your community, you have to offer them all kinds of tax and other incentives to move. And what we're finding is that since the growth of the internet and more free trade, what we're finding is that the game keeps changing on us. And so a lot of our economic development offices have had to move away from what they call stack, um, smokestack chasing, which is to bring a factory to town, to much more what they call economic gardening. It's like, that's why we do the business retention studies, why we try to persuade existing businesses to grow, because it's so hard to bring business to town. The likelihood of bringing General Motors to this community uh, uh, is very low. So we've got to find other ways. And so what's happening is these trends are changing the way we're doing business. What does this mean for our community? Well, in terms of the challenge that we face is that um, the cost to transfer knowledge is going down. So what's happening is that allows the urban areas to get an edge on us. So unless we have as good a transport system, and I'm not just meaning public transport, I mean good internet and being able to, to communicate uh, at the same level that the busy cities are, that gives us a challenge. And so what typically is happening is that we'd be told we're in the valley of death. Uh, in the big cities and towns, you've got universities. That's where all these regional innovation centers are located. Um, so for example, uh, Venture Lab, is based in Markham. Theoretically, we're part of Venture Lab, but they're not here today. Uh, ION is another regional innovation center. It's based in North Bay. Um, we're theoretically part of them. They're not here today. Uh, NORCAD in Sudbury is another regional innovation center. We're part of them theoretically, but they're not here today. And I don't blame them because as far as they know, nothing's happening here. The challenge on us is to be able to show there's enough happening here that these regional innovation centers want to come and play in our space. People have started to try and define what is regional innovation. The difficulty is defining something that's so interactive. And the common elements are you've got a bunch of startup companies, you've got a bunch of existing companies, you've got colleges and universities, you've got venture capital, angels, you've got all these different agencies all doing their own thing. And somehow you're hoping they're going to collide and make things happen. And this is where most of the regional innovation strategies when they start is there isn't a group of people worried about the whole problem. You've got a whole bunch of people worried about a piece of the problem. Our challenge to you today is help us worry about the bigger problem as well as the problem for your organization. We want to identify where there are clusters of innovation taking place across the region. So whether with it's businesses that are looking at new ways to innovate internally, whether that's, you know, adoption of new technologies, whether it's changing the way that they, you know, deliver services, changing the way they operate internally, whether it's, you know, supporting our municipalities to become more innovative or our organizations, you know, you look at someone like um, the Workforce Development Board that's created this one-stop shop job board, you know, how can we help kind of expand these innovations more broadly across the region and, and encourage everyone to think more innovatively. 
we want to determine really today what is the current innovation capacity of the area. So where are our businesses today? What do they view innovation as from their own business perspective? Where are our organizations at? today and what services and supports do they deliver to, to drive innovation in the region um, and what exists externally. So, you know, to Stuart's point, talking about the regional innovation centers who aren't here today, but we have reached out to them and we do want them engaged in how do we, you know, bring some of their niche, niche opportunities into this area should there be a fit with the needs of our region's business community or broader community or municipalities. Um, we want to build connections between innovative businesses, organizations, the public. Uh, we want to help our business community operate more efficiently. We want to help them expand their, their product lines, their services, their sales, improve their HR practices. We want to help better allocate funding for innovation to meet the needs of the business community. I know that was a big conversation that we had, Stuart, around the BEAM grants and, you know, are they going into the, the right um, the right area of a business and are there other opportunities to support innovation within a business beyond um, how the, those grants are currently being administered. And then we want to identify gaps and opportunities from the business community, from the public to help understand how we can f um, enhance the supports for the innovation ecosystem across the region. So here we are today, anxiety, can I cope? This is me at the top there. I'm happy, I'm really excited to see something like this going on. You know, I, I like I was saying, innovation is a passion of mine. Um, when I was younger, um, I was very interested in business incubation. When I did a master's in economic development, I focused on business incubation and graduate retention. And some of the feedback that I got back was, you know, you realize incubators are picking the winners. And every, since then, I, um, I went out and spoke with, you know, entrepreneurs who were in incubation, so being in economic development, you have the opportunity to go to all these conferences and other great learning opportunities, and you interact one-on-one -on -one with these entrepreneurs. And every time I have the opportunity, I will ask them, what is what made the critical difference for you to develop your business? Is it being in this incubator? And they say, no, it is the connectivity to my fellow entrepreneurs who are going through the exact same challenges. So to me, that gets the wheels turning to say, you know, you do not need a bricks and mortar incubator. Maybe, you know, that's something that might make sense, but really how do we deliver those types of opportunities on a much more dispersed geographical scale. Um, so yes, something's going to change. Um, I'm excited about that. Hopefully there's the opportunity for that. But then you start going down to, you know, what impact will I have? Ah, this is a really, really big challenge and, you know, a really big geography that we're dealing with and not a lot of great, ex I mean, there's plenty of best practices, but not necessarily one example that I would look at to say there's a really good example of a rural regional innovation type of network or ecosystem going so this is a challenge for all of us to hopefully accept um hopefully you know we won't spend too long in the who am i really you know what what are we going to do but i mean ultimately we want to say this can work and can be good um, i'll make this work if it kills me hopefully we don't have to get into the hostile stage but um <laughs> You know, what are we going to do? This is not meant to be a project to sit on the shelf. Um, we want to find out where we have a shared interest. So where does um, private sector, public sector, community needs and um, ideas, uh, directions align? And where can we go from there? We want to start some conversations both within um, the business community, but also with innovators around the community, with organizational innovators, with community innovators. Um, then we want to really get into a shared framework. So um, I'll be talking about kind of the different phases that were like the actual um, study phases or strategy phases. But really we want to talk about, you know, what are those overarching regional priorities around innovation? What is standing out in the short term? What's the direction for the long term? And then the commitment phase around building trust. So really when this strategy is done as a document, we want to have partners signed on and engaged to support the different actions and opportunities that are there. So it's not going to be like a oh, strategy recommendation, a, you know, build partnerships with your post-secondary institutions to facilitate innovation. We will have, you know, identified project partners who are already involved and engaged and say, yes, I can stand behind this. I may have some dollars or some capacity to put to behind this, and maybe that'll help us leverage some additional capacities as well, such as government funding or other organizational partners. So what does this look like? First phase, we're roughly targeting, you know, from August to uh, early February next year. 
And right now we're in that preparation stage. So, you know, we're putting together a business survey. Um, we're consulting you guys. We've developed some of that process. We're hoping to launch the survey actually next week out to the business community um, and keep that open until about mid-October. So this is a big part where we'll be looking for your support and I'll be talking about that briefly. Um, and then we're also gonna do, we would like to get feedback from the general public, um, a whole range of different stakeholders from the general public. So we kind of went back and forth around, what is the process? Should we hold public open houses? You know, are, is that gonna be effective? Should we survey? Um, and even with the business survey, we went back and forth saying, you know, our businesses, our public is surveyed out. Um, is this the right way to go? So what we decided on to actually try and get a more comprehensive look at um, what the general public needs are from an innovation perspective, we decided to do this guerrilla approach to surveying is what I'm going to call it. So we're going to identify different locations around the region. Uh, maybe it's a funky coffee shop or, you know, to, to look for young adults or maybe it's, you know, the community center to talk to families or, or a senior center to talk to, you know, the aging population to understand what their needs are. And we're just going to pop in and do some surveying in that methodology, essentially, um, whoever is there. We're going to drill down with some focus groups and really that's going to be looking at, you know, bringing the businesses back together. Um, and saying, you know, this is what we've heard from these initial surveys. We need to dig a little deeper. Um, the survey, you know, like any survey, you can't really ask 60 questions. That's why Jeff from Bravenhurst took our OMAF for br &E survey, which is 66 questions and cut it down to like 20 or something. Uh, <laughs> businesses don't have time for that, right? Um, so we do want to get them back in to get down to the really nitty gritty. You've identified these areas. This is what we're thinking as kind of priority areas what do you see makes sense in, in this context? And then we're gonna dig deeper into the data analysis piece. So I didn't include it on this slide, but while we're doing these focus groups and the surveying, the other piece that we'll be doing is going out to organizations like yourselves, like the regional innovation centers, other potential partners that we identify to really say, you know, what is your role in the innovation ecosystem? What do you offer and how can you be engaged in this? Just at a high level starting point to better understand, again, what's out there. So we'll be looking at what do the businesses want? What does the public want? What do the stakeholders or supporters of that, the sector offer? And trying to understand, you know, what does that mean for us in terms of priority areas? So, you know, maybe the services are being delivered and people aren't aware of it. So there's a connectivity communication challenge. Maybe there are gaps in services and supports that are available. Um, so hopefully, like I said, that leads to that identification of priority areas. And that's when we start talking to different partners to say, you know, this is what we're thinking under this area. This is based on what we've heard. How can we start working together to formulate what that looks like? Um, as a project that we can both sign on to. And then um, kind of going into phase two, we're looking at doing some further refinement of those, those action areas at the impact awards. And we may play with that um, depending on if that's the right timing or not, because it's still quite far away. Um, we're hoping to do a resident survey and that's kind of going into the summer season. So we capture both the permanent and seasonal residents. And then we're going to go into kind of a series of summer open houses. So at that point, we do hope we will already have kind of the strategy and priority areas and projects articulated. And we'll be getting feedback from the public stakeholders, businesses on does this make sense? Do we need to tweak something? You know, are we missing anything? All these sorts of things. And then we'll be ready to, to implement with the strategy and action plan completed. So. So this is why you're here today. Can we ask you guys for a little bit of help through this process? And hopefully we think there is kind of a shared mandate. We are collecting a lot of data on this. And like we said, we really, we do see innovation as a real opportunity to, to better support our business community um, and better position this region for enhanced economic development um, by you know, having youth that are more engaged and, and interested in technology and innovation and thinking out of the box, um, having businesses doing the same, our, our municipalities and rural organizations doing the same as well. Um, so we'd really love feedback on materials. So we do have a business survey. Um, it isn't here today, but we will be sending that out to you shortly. Just a quick uh, link to have a peek if you have any feedback. Um, 
not necessarily questions that you know your organization is really dying to know, but I mean, if you have a look and say, uh, I think this is irrelevant when we're talking about measuring the regional innovation system here, or um, oh, I think you guys are really, really missing this one specific piece, and businesses would have some would have input or feedback to provide, and we did try and keep it high level, as I mentioned. Um, helping us promote the surveys and the focus groups to your clients, business lists, social media. Um, when we sat back and thought about, you know, what is our communication strategy, really, this is probably the best link. So we will be doing, you know, some press releases as well, whether they get picked up or not, we're not sure, but hopefully reaching out through your respective organizations to share this information with your, your business communities um, and any other relevant organizations. Um, that would be very, very much appreciated. As we go out to do the, the um, focus groups, we will be looking for space. So if anyone wants or is interested in helping support this project with some in-kind space or, or, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be in-kind, but you can expect that, you know, if you're a municipal representative or, or affiliated or a chamber of commerce, it's quite likely that we'll be touching base with you just to see if there is the opportunity to leverage some space um, to facilitate a focus group in your community. And we would like, uh, so along that lines, if you're interested, I mean, I would invite any partner around this table to join us at these focus groups. If you want to hear what's going on in your community around the innovation side of things, if you want to hear what your business community is saying, we would more than welcome you to join and attend that session. We'd even appreciate it even more if you're interested in helping facilitate some of that discussion. So again, we'll be kind of reaching out to you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis where it makes sense. Um, and then also that sharing information about your organization. So I would anticipate, you know, come mid-October, we'll be going through kind of the feedback that you've given us on the partner surveys and reaching out to that broader, broader group of stakeholders and, and finding out more about how we can work together. So really, we do want that, that nitty gritty information on what, what you're doing that might be innovative or if you're not doing anything innovative, you know, does this fall within your bailiwick and how what, might we be able to work together going forward? Um, and then, of course, you know, as we go through this whole process and review the data, be open to the ideas of potential partnership. Like I said, you know, we don't want to create this to be another strategy and action plan that sits on the shelf. We want to drive projects forward, and we want to have commitments before a action plan is announced. So really, please be open to thinking about how your organization might fit within this, this component. So in terms of the last few slides, one of the challenges is why do we have such an unusual group of people in the room? And most of the regional innovation strategies that we've been looking at talk about having four kinds of people in the room. The traditional top right, which is your normal business development officers and business development type people and angel investors and, and, and those who want to invest in business. And as part of that, uh, PMCN has also joined the, jo the A Georgian Angel Network, so we can be in touch with what they're doing. And they've indicated they'd be very keen to see how the founder circle goes, because these are awards that are pre-angel type opportunities. Uh, the top left is tapping into the brain power. That's why they encourage you to talk to schools, libraries, colleges, and others who deliver workforce capabilities to help facilitate that gap of getting the ideas from the brain power into the business engines that can roll this out to the marketplace. And then the two other unusual categories, but the quality of a connected place. One of the reasons people um, will live in our community, because a lot of these innovative businesses, when they get good internet, can, live, can base, be based anywhere in the world. One of the opportunities is they're looking for not just quality places, but quality and connected places. So from a purely selfish point of view for Perry Simon Skoka Community Network, we're advocating for much better and more broadband, and so we really want to push that side. But there are more fo folks involved in having a quality environment. So the planners in the municipalities, the builders in our community who are building the homes, the real estate agents, all help spread the word what a, not only what a great place this is to live, but how well connected we are. And the fourth group of why would you want to have the tourism and media folks involved? Because they tell you, you've got to have good storytellers. You need a competitive identity. You need stories to inspire people to come here, set up their businesses here, or stay here. Or if they leave here, go somewhere else to a college or university, that they come back. 
We need the storytellers, and we need the storytellers in every community to make this work. And then finally in the middle, the civic collaboration. That's the folks in this room. This is only going to work if the folks in this room make it work. You're it. Nobody else that we know of has a primary interest in making this work. So if we develop a regional economic uh, initiative, an engine, and what have you, it's because of the work of the people in this room that's going to make it happen. Then how do you measure it? There are so many different ways of measuring this. In some organizations, they measure uh, the brain power by how many students got a job, or how many businesses hired a co-op student, uh, and how many public-private partnerships there are between educational and business community uh, efforts. Uh, in the business support, it's innovation awards, which we're trying. It's tracking ideas. One of the simplest ideas that has statistically the best research, if you said to a business, every month or every quarter, list every idea that you and your employees have. Put it on a list. It's that simple. And then every quarter, write which ideas get implemented. When you have a list of every ideas, that's your innovation capacity. And when the ones that you implemented, that's what your acceleration is. And of all the research they've done, those two pieces of information will give you a better indicator of how innovative your business is than any of the other indicators out there. It's a simple thing that you can ask business owners. If they just do that thing and nothing else to track the ideas and how, which ones and how many they're implementing, it's a good indicator of their innovation. In terms of municipalities and innovation, two ideas that are being uh, put out in research that seem to have the biggest impact. One is challenging our municipalities to measure how much of their spending is with innovative businesses in our community. What percentage of the dollars they spend every year are to try out new things, try out new things in roads, new things in construction, being able to allocate a certain amount of dollars. Our hospitals, how much are they prepared to do in terms of helping with innovation and trying out new toys and new software for our hospitals, etc. And the other one, which is a challenge I put to you, is having a simple conference on municipal innovation. Wouldn't it be great if somewhere in our community we got our municipalities together and we just had a conference on what is happening innovatively in municipalities throughout Canada and invited folks to come and share them. We don't have to have all the answers here. I want to invite these folks, host them here and put this on. This is something we as a group could do, something that could be really powerful and helpful. I'm sowing seeds of ideas that this is not something you can go away from and say, uh, we'll file a report, we'll fill out a survey, nothing's happened. We can sow seeds where we can start a whole bunch of things and a whole bunch of discussions happening. So that's a challenge I put out to us. In some regional strategy studies, and I'm not saying we should do it, they actually come up with some theme for the whole community. FedNor would love us if we had something in clean growth. They have it as one of their four areas of initiative. I'm not saying we should do this. Um, when we were up in Sudbury discussing this with them, we, uh, we had said, well, what do you mean by clean growth? It could be solar, it could be water, it could be whatever. And so for discussion, we said, well, what if it was just fresh water? We're one of the few places in the world with a lot of fresh water, and we all have one thing in common, we want to keep that water clean, right? And, but who uses water? Well, cottages worry about the water quality, people who do boating, fishing, uh, there, there, there are startup companies doing water testing. Uh, we're now having interesting discussions about generating power from water, and that's not always going down terribly well. But, but we as a community could take on a much more broader theme if we wanted to. Now, Fednor said if you wanted to play in that space, you'll probably actually find a whole bunch of folks throughout Northern Ontario that would like to be playing in some bigger umbrella. It doesn't have to be only us. But we may have another theme that emerges over time that we go, gosh, we actually have an umbrella under which we could all uh, have a piece and be helpful. Often this only happens when there's a crisis. When we had acid rain, what happened? Everybody that played with water and was worried about acid rain got together and we got it fixed, right? So there are bigger opportunities out there more than just our own uh, uh, community. In terms of deciding what we're going to do, regional innovation is really important if it's something that the public sees as valuable. And the only dis dis debate from there on is, can it be done profitably or do we need to help subsidize it? And what's happening in regional innovation, there's some stuff, once the business has got it, they can make it happen, it's profitable. But there's some stuff that's innovative, that's really good for the community, 
that needs us as a community to support. And should we, we should be open to that. And again, selfishly from Perry Sankoma Muskoka Community Network, Fednor's getting some more money soon. We'd like to come up with reasons why we should get some more of that money in our community. Okay, so really in the end, you know, what we're hoping for is we want to enhance the innovation value chain in Muskoka Perry Sound. So like we said, you know, encourage more business owners to become innovative, make it easier for them to leverage innovation, innovative technologies, innovative processes, um, build linkages within the region and externally, um, and use an evidence-based approach to identify innovation needs. So let's make sure that what we're doing is in fact in need. We're not kind of throwing money around just to test things. We're gonna have a driven strategy that's been identified by the entrepreneurs, by the public, by you guys as stakeholders or partners. Um, and really, you know, in the end, we're gonna have these priority areas, a number of different options of what we can do. So those are the alternatives. And then ultimately we wanna decide this is the strategy or the specific actions that we are gonna pursue. Lots of options. This is what makes most sense in this region. Um, starting with identifying some quick wins, um, but really, you know, looking towards those longer term viable actions and building the cooperation and trust it'll, it'll take to, to get there.